I've built my own little chatbot that is trained on all of my content. In this video, you'll learn how I achieved that and more importantly, how you can teach yourself all kinds of different emerging AI tools. So I don't just want to talk the talk, I also want to walk the walk. I had the idea to build this kind of chatbot for a while now as the first step of a way larger AI pipeline, which I will try to achieve in my next video. And I thought, why not take you on the ride on how to learn pretty much anything in AI? This strategy is based on my own experience and partly on Scott Young's ultra learning system. The chatbot is actually a perfect starting place already because I always start with a project in mind. I need to know what to build before learning anything. It provides a certain focus and direction and lets me reverse engineer what I need to learn to get there. More on that in a bit. But what if you don't have a goal to strive for? Well, first of all, I would question why even learn new things? Like, what's your motivation? If you don't have a project in mind, why learn something if you don't really know where you will apply it? I mean, maybe you just heard AI is the new cool thing that will help you get more job opportunities, and I think that's a valid reason as well. The next step, which is called meta-learning, will put you on your way in that case. Meta-learning is really powerful, even if you have a project idea already. What it boils down to is to grasp what is possible and what is available. Let me explain it this way. Imagine you need to do some woodwork, and if you're like me, you have zero clue about any of that. Without meta-learning, you're in an empty garage with no leads. If you did your meta-learning, however, you are in a garage full of tools and have a basic description of what they do. This doesn't mean you can use them yet, but at least you know that they exist and can pick the ones that would be helpful for the job you want to perform. And as you might have guessed, I use the exact same strategy when dealing with AI. Mind maps are generally a fantastic tool to get an overview of a field. I use Scrintle for my meta-learning AI mind map and they were kind enough to sponsor this video. Scrintle makes it easy for everyone to visually map out complex projects, build processes, plan and research. It's a visual-first web app that combines mind mapping with the power of networked note-taking. Compared to other tools, I like using Scrintle for brainstorming because the barriers of getting started are as low as it gets and the UX is self-explanatory. Just click anywhere to create a card, fill it with content, connect it to other cards, even with bi-directional links if you like, and drag it to wherever you want. The tool is not bloated at all and at the same time gives you all the necessary features to develop ideas. You can use tags to provide further structure and use the auto-generated footer section to see what the card relates to. The editor gives you a lot of different options, from bullet points to headlines, file uploads and much more. In case your board becomes too complex, you can use the search function with a keyboard shortcut, which is really useful to me, or just mark some cards and create a separate board for them. You can also import your existing knowledge base from Obsidian, Rome Research and Notion with a single click. I also want to point out that the team seems like a great bunch of people. They let you help shape the development with a public roadmap, offer student discounts and are transparent in how they go about the business. As a user, you will be invited to an exclusive channel where you can get priority support and book one-on-one -on -one meetings with the founders too. Because it's still an early stage product, they offer a special $5 per month pricing for all early access subscribers. You can lock this price forever by signing up to Scrintle today using the link in the video description. And by applying the code TILL10, you even get 10% off. One thing that's important here and that you can find pretty much anywhere, but especially in computer science, is the level of abstraction. Where do you want to fit in? Let me give you another example. In my last video, I made an anime by combining at least 10 different AI tools and techniques. The highest abstraction level would be to use something like Gen 1, where you just enter a text prompt and get your video sequence. Super easy to learn, but obviously very limited in capabilities and especially in flexibility. The lowest abstraction level would be making everything from scratch, building your own neural networks and whatnot. Very technical, requires a lot of time to learn, but gives you the most flexibility. I like to be between the two extremes. In my case, I train models myself and use different techniques that are on the intermediate level. And we do the same in this video. The highest abstraction level using ChatGPT would be learning how to write better prompts and understand the best use cases for ChatGPT. We will work on one layer lower than that, which means understanding the OpenAI API and the different models it makes available, as well as the combination with some other frameworks like Langchain to connect ChatGPT to our own data. If you are a complete beginner in the field, I would suggest that you start with the highest abstraction level and then work yourself downwards. Many others would suggest that you start with the foundations of the field, but I don't agree. You will see why during the video. If you want to spend more time learning things, I think it needs to be fun. 
and to me at least it's more fun if I can get results quickly and improve on them with experimentation, instead of studying a lot of theory. If you're really interested in all the math behind machine learning, by all means go for it. Starting with a project in mind helps you with being direct. It helps you figure out what is actually necessary. I once made a tool that generates websites from a text or audio description. You don't need to learn how neural networks function or how to build them. This context can help you achieve more and more ambitious projects, but it comes later down the line. We now have an overview of what's available and have decided on what we want to achieve with the given tool. What's next? Break it down into manageable steps. Here, once again, starting with the end result in mind helps in my opinion. I want to make a chatbot that can answer questions based on my content. Okay, so from the tools that I can see that the OpenAI API can create natural language responses based on text. But it should be based on my text. Well, Langchain lets me connect OpenAI to my own data. But my data needs to be in text form. I only create videos. So I need to transcribe the videos. Luckily, the toolset suggests another solution for that. Whisper. And to transcribe the videos, I first need to download all the videos. And just by doing that, I now have a game plan. I just need to reverse the order and complete the steps one by one. Download the videos, transcribe them, put them into Langchain, whatever that means, I don't know at this point, and then query the OpenAI API with my questions. This process also helps in finding your bottleneck or weakness. It answers what is left to learn to complete the project. I already used Whisper before, so that's not a problem for me. And the ChatGPT API is not new to me either. Downloading videos is hardly a bottleneck, because if I can't figure out how to do it programmatically, I can put in some time and just do it manually. So the only really new part here is how to use Langchain. I then usually just watch a bunch of videos on the subject to get a better idea of how easy or how difficult it is to work with that new tool. I also try to get a basic understanding of how it works. Afterwards, I always try to apply the knowledge or rather transfer it to my own creations. That's when the real learning happens. Once I'm confident that I can pull it off, I just follow the laid out game plan. Let's get our application going before moving to the next part of our system. JetGPT is incredibly useful for writing short Python scripts, so I ask it to write me a program that downloads all videos from my channel. And magically, it just does exactly that. The only thing I needed to do was get an API key from the Google Developers Console, and that's it. Now all videos are coming right into my downloads one by one. You might say that ChatGPT did all the job and that I didn't learn anything in the process. And that's kind of true. My goal wasn't to learn the data preparation part. For the next step, another learning concept called retrieval comes into play. Retrieval is something that's very prevalent when learning vocabulary of a new language. You try to remember what the translation of a term was, thereby repeating your flashcards. In my eyes, for skills that you pick up in the technology area, retrieval happens automatically. It's not like I regularly go through my different softwares and skills and be like, hmm, how to center a diff again in CSS or how to color correct in Final Cut. Instead, I'm confronted with repetition retrieval whenever I need to use that technique again. And that was the case here as well, because I needed to retrieve what I learned about Whisper. I don't remember the exact command line prompt, but I remember how to run the prompts in general and how to specify the outputs. That's all I needed to make it work with another ChatGPT generated Python script. Creating these kind of mini programs to automate simple tasks is what ChatGPT really excels at, and I use it a lot. We now have text and subtitle files for all 89 videos I have released on my channel, and this honestly only took me a few minutes. Pretty cool, I think. Now it's finally time for the juicy stuff, Langchain and OpenAI. Langchain allows you to connect LLMs like GPT-4 to external information sources, in my case, the transcripts of my videos. To do that, we slice the transcripts into smaller chunks and store them in a special database called a vector store. Since computers like numbers and vectors, we turn the text into these vector embeddings. Embedding is a term you might have heard before in an AI context. What these embeddings allow you to do is to measure the relatedness of text strings, which is exactly what we want when you think about our problem. Asking a question and finding fitting or relating info within the transcripts. To create the vector representations, we use OpenAI's ADA model. After I successfully created and retrieved my vector store, I could now query the OpenAI text completion endpoint to receive my answers. All that was left to do was build a simple front end that could talk with the function I wrote and we're good to go. This was quite an easy project to understand some of the Langchain basics, like the different chain types, text splitters and vector stores. But it also led me to another realization. While working on projects, you get to expand the mind map all the time because you become aware of limitations and then research solutions. 
You naturally move downwards in the abstraction layers the more things you create and play with. That's why I don't think you need to start with the foundations. You will be exposed to them eventually anyway, and if not, I don't see why I should study them, because they don't seem to be valuable for what I want to do. There are two more parts in Scott Young's Ultra Learning System that I fully agree with. The first one is intuition. This comes close to what I mean when I talk about digital literacy and what I laid out in my concept of the circle of accelerated adaptation. It basically means that the more you work with different tools, the easier it will be to learn even more of them. You develop an intuition for how digital applications work, or even how AI tools work more specifically. I believe it's by far my most valuable skill that I can pick up new technology rather quickly. This is obviously beneficial in a field that moves as fast as AI, but also gives you the confidence to learn things that are outside of any field you've touched. I'm currently thinking about if I should play with some electrical engineering first to leverage my coding skills and build some cool robotic stuff that use AI, or if I should get more into 3D animation to leverage my video editing skills. I think the best creative results come from combining adjacent or even unconnected fields. This leaves me with experimentation, which in my eyes is the most important and most interesting part of the process. Just make things. Try out what happens when you do this or that. This is also necessary to find your own path and discover your own style and taste. I'm still quite early on my own journey here and I believe that my style and my taste still changes quite drastically over time, but it's very fun to just try new things. Not everyone is driven by their curiosity in that way, but if you are, I think you should make use of that. I poured over 150 hours of creativity and learning new AI tech into this video where I created my own anime. Make sure to check that one out. And thank you for watching.